Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And while I'm still continuing the work on the jet boat project, I figured no time was better than now. Why I have a long ways to go, they get distracted and start messing around with the gauges. Let me show you what I have. Yeah, I know. I'm a long ways away from actually needing gauges, but can't help myself. I got a little small project that I can go ahead and jump on today. So let's talk about this. Now, while I'm doing all this work on the boat, I would love to come through here and change all these gauges, but that's really just not in the budget. These are the, I presume, original medallion gauges in the boat. And well, if you notice, one isn't like the others. This oil temp gauge, man, I can tell you what, it just stares at me when we're on the lake. It's in the wrong position and it doesn't match any of the other gauges. Not much I can do on the position right now because I got these two switches up top and that's gonna require quite a bit of fiberglass and gel coat work. Nothing I'm looking to do right now. I want this boat back in the water. But if I could get this gauge switched out to one of these older medallions, I'd be very excited and happy about that. Now, the thing with that though, you can't get these gauges new anymore. And for the past two, probably three years, I've been trying to keep an eye out for a medallion oil temperature gauge. Well, I was able to find this gauge here and it is exactly what I needed with the exception that it has this square bezel. Now, before, when I bought it, I was hopeful that this bezel would unbolt off and it was just a plastic trim piece over it and then it would match the other gauges. As it turns out, it doesn't. It's part of the gauge. So, is what I ended up doing. I purchased another medallion gauge, except this one is an oil pressure. And my plan for today is to disassemble this gauge, take the gauge face, the better glass and the internals out of this gauge, take this gauge apart and give myself a period correct medallion oil temperature gauge that will match the rest. So I'm gonna set the camera down and we're gonna start dissecting these and getting everything swapped over. Okay, so I'm gonna start by disassembling the oil temperature gauge that I need. So I don't need this back case or anything or the front cover. I'll just get the pieces off that I don't need and see if I can get the internals out because there's no sense in even taking apart the other gauge that I'm going to be putting this stuff into if I can't even get it out of this housing. So we'll give it a shot. Now, I know it's probably Murphy's Law as soon as I get done doing this. One of the gauges that I need will probably pop up and all this will be for nothing. But this is my backup plan. Like I mentioned, I've kept an eye out for quite a while on a gauge. Kind of a soft effort. Haven't seen one pop up. I saw these two gauges come up separately and well, they were inexpensive enough to where I'm not really too invested into this. So if it doesn't work, I lost maybe $20, a little bit of time. So I'm willing to take that risk and hopefully get the gauge that I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this lens out And this has the display that I need for the oil temp on it. Let's set that up there. And I should be able to unbolt these three studs that go to the terminals for the gauge and push everything out through the front. Now, years ago on this boat, I actually had some issues with the trim gauge, which that is as well as a medallion gauge. And while I was diagnosing it, I actually ended up taking that gauge apart also and getting into it from the back side. Um, I did have an extra trim gauge that I was able to find a new old stock one, so I didn't have to worry about damaging that one. And I do remember on that gauge that getting this bezel off was the hardest part, but I was able to do it. But unfortunately, I don't remember specifically what I did to get it off. So, right. so I can tell that the guts of the inside of this gauge are pretty loose, so this is going to be pretty simple, I think. I am presuming the hardest part of this swap is going to be getting the other gauge apart without damaging it because I need all of that. There we go. There we go. And so 
You can see that these studs that hold it on actually go on on the back and they're the terminals. And really all this gauge is, um, just has a resistor in there and some windings and the stepper motor. So pretty basic. Dimensionally, they should be the same. So I just need to go ahead and get this other gauge out of the case for the oil pressure. I need to retain this case. I don't want to damage the bezel and I don't want to damage the glass just in case. I'm not worried about the face with anything else in there. Um, all of that I have extras of. So I'm gonna start by just kind of tinkering and messing with this and seeing if I can't get it off. And I'm not sure what approach I'm gonna take, but I'll let you guys know what I'm gonna do or what I did to get this off. I just took the heat gun and as you saw, I heated up this ring and used two strap wrenches, one on the body, one on the ring, and it came off a lot easier than I thought. I was honestly expecting a bit of a fight, you know, to go a couple rounds with it, but got it pretty quickly. To get the glass out, this one in this round gauge, I wanna mention is actually glass, the other one is plastic. So in order to get that out without breaking it, there is this rubber seal behind it, which is a little bit different than the other. And I had to heat that up again and really gently and carefully get that pried off. But where that is off, and I can go ahead and pop off the faceplate. So now, just like the other gauge, I should be, the, be able to go ahead and take off these bolts in the back and take the internals out of this gauge. And then it's just gonna be a swap. Now, there is one thing I wanna mention, and if you look on the back of the gauge, we have the three terminals ground, the positive and the sender. So essentially the case on this one, since it's aluminum, the ground, as you can see, is just touching it and that's completely fine because it's grounding out the entire case. And for the sender and the positive, you can see that green washer underneath and that's to isolate them from the case so it doesn't short out internally. This other back case was plastic and you can see it's, because it's plastic, it has this aluminum tab here that connects to the ground that powers the light. That's important to note that these green washers did not exist on the other case because it's plastic, they're not needed. So when I reassemble the other internals into this case, I need to be sure to transfer those washers over. Otherwise I'm just gonna have a nightmare of electrical problems on this. And you can see how it has the part of this washer that inserts into the body to cover the shanks so that way there's no movement and any shorting. So. It's very important. If you don't swap those over, you're gonna have a lot of problems and a lot of nightmares. So a small piece that seems insignificant is very important in this case. So here's to hoping that the internals of these gauges are the same dimensionally, and it's just basically a plug and play. Now, I would imagine that medallion when they manufactured these didn't really change the internals of the gauges and just changed the cases based on what they needed. Um, but you never know. I'm banking on the fact that they're the same. So we'll get this hardware out. Slide that out. And if we look, we can see that everything is pretty much the same. Obviously the different faces. So we can swap the oil pressure for the oil temperature and it looks like we're in business. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the hardware, get this reassembled, bring you guys back here in a couple minutes. one minor issue and I'm going to show you how I went ahead and overcame that small issue. Um, there was a small difference on the gauges and I noticed that when I went to bolt the new oil temperature gauge into this housing. I installed the spacers that we mentioned that prevent it from shorting out and after I tightened that bolt you can see that it was still loose. So 
I popped the gauge out and if you look, the old oil um, pressure is the green and the oil temperature is this white one. So this green one was the one that I was installing in. And if you look, they actually have a spot inside where these spacers slide all the way down and in. Now on the other gauge, it doesn't have that, so it sits spaced off. Really no easy way to switch that over. So is what I decided to do was take that spacer and you can see I cut it down. Now I achieved the height that I needed by placing the spacer on the inside of the gauge bezel, which is backwards of how they're assembled. And you can see how it sticks out. I just went and took a razor blade and cut the piece off that sticks out. So when I flip them around, they're gonna fit tight. Now I will go ahead and take some electrical tape and place it on the back side inside this housing. I'm doing that because I'm losing a little bit of the design where it has the protection with this green um, spacer sliding into that post section. Since I cut it off, I just wanna be double sure that there's gonna be no way it shorts out. So just a little tape in there. I can put it together, cut the other one down, and I'll finish reassembling this thing. there we go we got everything swapped over and now I have the gauge that I need my nice round oil temp gauge so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the boat I'm gonna get that old Sun gauge out get this new gauge put back in and I'll bring you back once we have everything all finished up well as you can see getting this old gauge out gave me a fight whoever installed this gauge last they are planning on that being a one-way trip I had to beat this thing out. It was rusted and corroded to the wood, but it was such a tight fit. Just really nothing left of it. But I was able to get it out. Luckily, the new gauge slid right in, able to hook up all the wires. I need to change the pigtail for the light, so that's just hanging down now. I also need to change the light on this trim gauge that I replaced a while back, because it, again, is different also. So I'll need to order new pigtails for those lights to screw in. But you can see it's so much better now. I have a matching set of gauges. Um, wasn't able to correct the location of it very easily, but with an hour of time, a little bit of a distraction on the rest of the projects of the boat, I was able to come out here and get this gauge swapped around. And now it's not staring at me so bad. I'm sure it's still gonna drive me crazy when we're out in the water and this one gauge is not centered with the rest of them, but I can live with what we have right now. Like I mentioned, I need to focus on the rest of this boat getting it put back together, get it in the water and use it. In a year or two, when I'm ready to jump back into the boat project, I plan on coming back to this dash. I'm probably gonna fill this hole and get this gauge recentered. I think I'm probably gonna move this trim gauge to the other side. Not totally sure. I'm gonna rearrange the gauges. I plan on replacing the gauges, which means I'm gonna have some fiberglass and gel coat work up here. But right now, I just gotta know when to stop. I have plenty of work to do on the boat. This is a good, quick, easy fix, inexpensive. Let me take a break from the bigger projects on the boat. I'm happy at the outcome. So as always guys, if you have any comments in this video, please drop them below. I'll jump in and keep an eye on them. I'll respond to your questions. If you liked this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. That really does help out the videos. Thanks for stopping by the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one, guys.